Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to um, SBI 4UO. Uh, I'm going to call this Grade 10 Chemistry Review. Okay, um, it may have been a little bit of time since some of you have um, looked at uh, what we tend to call the periodic table. If you look on the periodic table, uh, you might find that it's it's composed of boxes, and um, there are some some letters um, and some numbers, and uh, we'll just take an example here. Let's pretend that we're looking at a box called um, called lithium, and uh, there's this number three, and there's a number seven, and we have to determine what these do and what they mean and what they what they help us uh, calculate and figure out. Uh, the number three up here in this top corner of the box is called the atomic number. And this number seven here is called the atomic mass. Um, the atomic mass is equal to the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. The atomic number, on the other hand, is simply the number of protons. If you have the number of protons, and you have the number of protons and neutrons, using these two numbers, you could easily calculate the number of neutrons on their own by a little issue of subtraction. Uh, what we're going to really look at here is the number of protons because the number of protons is in many cases equal to the number of electrons provided we do not have an ion. Okay. So if we have um, a lithium atom, um, we know that in the nucleus we have, um, let's draw our nucleus right here, we have three plus protons. And we also have three electrons in a non-charged atom. And we can draw our Bohr-Rutherford diagrams, remember these, um, and we have a number of electrons that will fit in the first orbital, and a number of electrons that will fit in the second orbital. Uh, in this case, we only have to add one because there are only three in total. So we have one, two, three, and this is called the Bohr-Rutherford diagram. Okay. Um, when you have the nucleus of an atom, and it's surrounded by electron shells, you will recall that you can fit two atoms in the first shell, eight atoms in the second shell, eight atoms in the next shell, and so on. We're not going to look at too many more than that right now. Um, it's not necessary for what we're going to discuss. Okay, so let's... Um, start here by looking at a, a very important atom to um, our biology discussion and it's carbon and if you look at carbon on the periodic table you're going to see that it's got a number six and um, it also has a number 12 written down here um, if you look at carbon on the periodic table its atomic number is six and its mass number is 12 well, what does that mean? Well, it means that carbon has six um, electrons and protons, and uh, we can do a Bohr-Rutherford diagram for it, and so we would have the nucleus, and then we would have one orbital out here and another orbital out here in our Bohr-Rutherford diagram. If you've taken any more chemistry since grade 10, you know that this is a bit of a uh, an inaccurate model, but it still works for what we want to do today. Um, we have two electrons in the first shell, and we have four electrons 
in the outer or valence shell. And that equals four. Interestingly, carbon would like to have a total of eight in this outer shell. If it had a total of eight, it would, it would feel, it would behave like neon, and um, neon being uh, a noble gas, uh, which doesn't react, is, is in a stable condition. So carbon wants to get a total of um, four more electrons in this outer shell somehow or other. And let's see how carbon tends to do that. Um, let's just look at our outer shell here again. Here's our inner shell with two electrons there and there. And we're going to look at this outer shell. Now it's this outer shell of the uh, Bohr Rutherford diagram that we're most interested in. And I'm going to put those in pink because they're a rather important set of electrons. In fact, they're so important that we decided in grade 10 that we would start to uh, only look at them. And so we began to have what we called Lewis dot diagrams. And what Lewis dot diagrams were, if you remember, were little diagrams, Lewis dot diagrams, um, that showed us only the valence electrons. So we didn't have to worry about the electrons in the inner shells, only the outer shells. Now when we have a Lewis dot diagram of carbon, um, we can do a lot of things with it. So for example, if carbon um, was to meet up with uh, another atom of, say, hydrogen. Now hydrogen, if you'll remember, has a single electron um, in its single electron orbit, and it would like to get another one. At least it would like to share it. Um, and so if we have carbon with four electrons, what ends up happening is that these two elements will share these electrons. And in fact, what will happen is you'll have several carbons and hydrogens sharing electrons. And they're sharing these electrons and in the end, what ends up happening is that carbon has eight electrons in its outer orbital because it's sharing these and it's fat and happy while these hydrogens have two electrons in its outer shell and they're also fat and happy. And we end up with a compound called CH4 which is known as methane. 